Right guys, so here we are then for another video here today, and this is what would happen if F1 returned to the old Hockenheim ring. This is another episode in the series, guys, where we revisit former F1 tracks in the current 2019 F1 cars, the fastest F1 cars in history. And today, this one has been, I'd say, pretty highly requested, but also one that I wanted to personally do myself because it's quite an iconic track and one that doesn't even exist anymore because it got modified and changed. So we are racing at the old Hockenheim. So if you guys didn't know um, the rollout we have right now, that was actually first introduced, I believe, in 2002. The last race ever around the old Hockenheim ring was in 2001 where they used to go through the woods and it was much more of a high speed uh, low downfall circuit where you know you, re you really used to run those really slim wings like Monza to really maximize the speed traps and uh, the only thing that's re pretty much remained the same is sector three so we're going to jump into it and let's see how we get on we're racing in Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes here today I thought it'd be fitting for Mercedes home Grand Prix to race around here so yeah let's jump into it and let's see what this old track has in store for us right here we are then Let's get underway and let's see what this track is like. So, first of all, a few things to point out. So, as I mentioned, Sector 3 is pretty much the same. Turn 1 is very different. It's got a lot more banking. As we go into the woods, you can see here, this is where normally about here you're turning right for Turn 2. But you're not. You're, you're going on straight. So, as you can see, we're going to just continue going into the woods here. And it's just a massive, massive, massive straight. It doesn't end. And then when you arrive to this kind of break marker board slash sponsor board you've got the first of multiple chicanes as you can see here lots of curb on the exit so we can definitely use that and we are going to use that later on once we put up our confidence it's a very easy track to get on top of i know the layout it's very very easy and uh, i think this one will be quite an easy one to get up to speed for but quite a tricky one to find the optimal lap time got a bit of lag here through these trees but here's a second chicane and then you've got this beautiful banking such a good corner on the old track. Doesn't quite do it justice on here. There was such a nice banked corner. And then you've got another long straight. And then, surprise, another chicane. Who would have thunk it? You break again at the kind of sponsor board as your reference. And this one's important because now we're going to make our way into the track that's still intact today. Sector 3, if you will. So this would be going past the Mercedes-Benz Grandstand, the right-hand side in real life. And you're going to rejoin right here, which is where the third sector is. And then suddenly, you're into the baseball stadium, or should I say the stadium section. The baseball stadium is at Mexico, not here. Sacks curve, hairpin again. And the final two corners were actually slightly different back in the day. They were kind of a bit tighter. You can see how Roy Bam caught out by running wide. We managed to just get away with it, but the, the final corners were a lot tighter. And uh, slightly more banked. They definitely opened those up a bit more as we get some oversteer. But that is a lap of... The old Hockenheim, we're just going to turn around and go for a, at least a semi-decent time lap. Even though we're going to have no momentum off the line, let's just push and see what we can do. So here we go, up to speed, DRS are open, we're going to use a lot of DRS in this lap. Turn 1, let's see, it's a lot quicker turn 1, you can push a lot more, use all the track on the exit. And again, flat out, this is uh, going to be interesting once we turn the engine up and take the fuel at how high of a top speed we can hit. I'm definitely going to reduce the wings a bit to make sure the car has a lot more speed on the straight. But let's break at the uh, sponsor board here. Down to third gear. That first curb is a bit of a killer. And the second one wants to just spin you out. We just about get away with it. DRS open again. First sector done and dusted already. This chicane is my favourite. I love this one so much because there's a lot of banking and it's very, very technical. No brake marker boards whatsoever, so it's going to be a complete just guess as to where to brake. Oh man, the back end just went there. The turbo is so powerful. Right, we're going to just try and regroup a bit and we'll go again. So uh, let's get this car turned around and try and go for a proper lap. Right, we're going to try again. These two corners are a lot narrower. I've got to try and readapt. There's a bit of a bump as well, which makes it quite nasty. But there we go, on the throttle now, through the final corner. Let's open up the RS. Let's try again. Let's try and set a proper lap time. Turn one. Down two gears. Carry a lot of speed in sixth gear. So much quicker. I mean, to be fair, nowadays, the current F1 cars do take the current F turn one very quick. But I just prefer the layout of the old one because it's much more flowing. Turn one nowadays is much more of a sharp apex. And um, you need to be really, really precise. And it takes a lot of finesse to get the line perfect. But with this old layout, you just throw it in and uh, it'd probably be the right line nine times out of ten. Nice and tidy through there this time, using all the curb on the exit. 
and we're already a second up. Let's see if we can just try and finish a lap at least with no dramas and uh, get a lap on the board so we've got something to aim for. So let's try and spin out this time as we go towards the chicane. I'm struggling for some frames through certain areas with the trees, so hopefully it's not too noticeable in the video. The RS open again there, this time we don't spin out, a little bit more cautious on the throttle. And now we look for the brake zone into the next chicane. Again, probably the Vodafone board as a reference here. Another third gear. Don't have nowhere near enough confidence in this car yet. The tyres just don't feel that great. I think we're going to do a lot of setup work to try and get this car into the into the zone. Also, tyre compounds can make a big difference. But here we go. There's the, the, the forest done. And now into the stadium section. Down two gears, trying to carry some speed. There's not much kerb on this old layout. Like the current track we have nowadays, there's a lot less curbs, so you've got to be very careful to not run too wide or take the kind of line you would do in the real life track. A bit wide there, just caught the grass, but we'll, we'll get on with it. On the power, there we go, DRS open. And up to the line, that's going to be our first proper lap, a 1 minute 40.8. Just for perspective, the current Hockenheim is about 1 minute 15 or 1 minute 10, so that's how much longer and slower this uh, previous lap was. Obviously, the lap in itself is really, really fast. It's flat out pretty much the whole way through, but it's longer in the sense and slower in the sense that it's just a much bigger track. But overall, we've got our first lap on the board. Let's go for some setup work. Okay, so the fuel has been halved from 50 to 25 litres. We've kept the super soft tyres on the car. We've also reduced the front wing drastically and also the rear wing, but slightly. We've also increased the ERS deployment mode and also recharge and recovery. And uh, yeah, hopefully these changes will make us a little bit more competitive. So here we go for the final corner. There we go. The RS open, stay off the grass. Into turn one we go. How much speed do we want to carry? Let's find out. Sixth gear. Oh, that's not the line. Too much. Too early. Right, we're going to try again. As we go through the final few corners. Such a different feeling to the final two corners to what I'm used to. It just feels so strange. Here we go. Let's try this again. Let's try to be a little bit more tidy if we turn one this time. That's better. That's what I'm talking about. Again, there's no curb on the left-hand side of turn one like in real life. You know, again, that was a different thing back in the day. So you couldn't really run wide and open up the corner as much as you'd like. But already you can see with the high engine mode, you can look at the delta on the wheel, the top right-hand corner. We're gaining so much time here. How late do we leave on the brakes? Quite late. On the gas, there we go, the RS open really early. Almost a second up already as we make our way towards the second chicane. This will be a much more accurate lap time. Let's see how late we can break it. Oh, that's nice and late. As the shadow ends. On the throttle quickly. Use the banking, open up the RS and there we go, 1.3 up. This is a much better lap from us. One more chicane to go, let's make sure we... Uh, Get it right, we can carry a bit of speed to this one as well. I'm going to trumpet a little bit later. Use fourth gear for the first, third for the second. On the throttle quickly, the RS open. That's a pretty good exit, 1.7 up. Now we go into sector three and the stadium section. Let's try and improve. Try and carry a bit more speed through here if I can. Turn in a little bit earlier, that worked out quite nicely for us. Again, there's no real curbing to lean on, so it looks like I'm not really pushing, but you know, there's not much track to use outside of the tarmac. Through the final couple of corners. Very nicely done. One more corner to go. A bit wide there, missing the apex slightly. DRS open, and we are going to improve by two and a half seconds almost. And it's a 138.5. There we go. Much better lap. Let's uh, go back to the garage, and let's go for now a flat-out qualifying setup. And let's see if we can maybe push maybe a 136 with full engine power, possibly. Although I do think we're probably going to run out of ERS because it's such a long trek and uh, there's a lot of flat out on this track. So we'll try and see what the best option is. But let's go back to the garage and uh, weigh up our options. Okay, so we've made the changes. I'm now going to turn the engine up to a full power. Well, not a full. I'm going to go... I'll go balanced high, I think, because um, I'll kind of be more flexible. Balanced high is going to be the main mode. I've also got... Um, I think I've got top speed, overtake and hot lap, but we'll do balanced high for the lap because then we won't run out. But we've reduced the fuel to 10 litres, and we've now got the softest possible tyres on the car, and I've reduced the front wing even more. So here we go. Let's see what we got. To turn one, let's throw it in. A little bit early again, but we get away with it. Nice bit of curb action. Up to hot lap mode, let's use it up a little bit. 
as we go down towards the first chicane. You can see the delta, how much we're flying on the straight here. I've looked at the lap, and the, the record is a 138.1 from Montoya in qualifying. So we're probably going to smash that. Not by much, though, I don't think, in this car, but still, it's going to be pretty decent. Obviously, those cars are V10 with lots of power that could compete around this track. There's not many corners. And so the next chicane here, let's break nice and late. Sacrifice the first to open up the exit. There we go. On the throttle, DRS open. Already a second up here. This is a much better lap. The difference in setup is just really pushing the car to a new level. Turn the ERS to point back down here for the chicane. It's a lot of time to find in this chicane, I feel. Using third. Yes, what a line through there. And a fantastic exit. Let's use up the rest of the ERS on this straight. And we'll have a little bit left over for sector three. Turn in. A little bit wider, but we just go away with it. Attacking the apex. Back end again a bit loose. Had to use second gear to save the back end there. Through the final couple of corners. Really giving it everything now. On the throttle. DRS open one last time. Up to the line. A 136-0. And that is a big lap. There you go. We smashed the lap record. Qualifying mode making such a big difference around here and also just running a lot more engine power paying off massively. We, we actually uh, managed the ERS quite nicely throughout really with the blue bar on the left hand side. That was very nicely done. So very happy with that one. And uh, overall a decent lap. I'm going to have a little bit of a sweat now and see if I can get into the 35s and I'll call that a successful session. So I'll be back with you guys once I've managed to get myself into the 135s hopefully. There we go, there it is, 135, took me quite a bit to be fair, quite a bit of an effort, I managed to get down to a 36-0-0-0, but overall we got there in the end, and I really, really enjoyed that. I'm now going to leave you guys with the replays, both from TCAM and also uh, TV PodView, and uh, I'll be back at you in a moment's time.
guys, that's going to be it for this video here today. And hopefully you enjoyed it and the return to the old Hockenheim ring. And oh boy, is it a challenging circuit and it bites you in many different ways. But if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, let me know in the comments down below, guys. And give me some suggestions in the comment section. I'll be trying to take them on board for future episodes. But if you enjoyed this particular video, guys, drop a like on it. And also get subscribed if you are new, guys, for daily Formula 1 content. And also check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next episode very soon. And hopefully it's another decent and fun track. But until then, guys, I'll see you in my next video. And yeah, guys, it's goodbye from me.